Hi friends, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Here's what we're discussing today. Today we have an interesting case from the Missouri Western District Court of Appeals that deals with misidentification. And it it's actually kind of a funny case, but also kind of a sad case when you get right down to it. One of the things that's really important when you set up a company and you decide you want to be an LLC or a corporation or a limited partnership or whatever, is you go and you check the corporation's database at your state's secretary of state and you find out if there's anybody else that has that name. Because if somebody else has Acme Distributors LLC as their, you know, as their name, you can't be Acme Distributors LLC number two because there's too much risk of confusion and misidentification. And as a result of that, most secretaries of state will not allow you to register a name that is so close to another name that it would be a, a situation where you could be easily misidentified. This case deals with a company called Moving Pros. And as you can see, they spell that with a Z at the end instead of an S with, at the end. And in this case, that one little letter... S to Z, that one transposition, that made about a $184,000 difference in this case. So let's take a look at the petition, and I will explain a little bit more at the end as to how this all worked out. So Moving Pros LLC is the appellant here, and they allege that the trial court didn't have personal jurisdiction over them and that they were denied due process, and that as a result, the default judgment that was entered against them ought to be set aside. And the Western District doesn't bury the lead. Finding no error, we affirm. So Charles Jeff Chick filed a four-count verified petition against moving pros on October 22, 2021 in the Circuit Court of Clay County. The petition sought relief for losses related to an incident that occurred when he was moving. The petition identified moving pros, LLC, as the defendant with the Z in the last name and noted that moving pros with the Z could be served by its, by its registered agent at, one, at 1028 North Kings Highway, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. The trial court issued a summons on October 28, 2021 for use in serving the petition. The summons, however, named moving pros with an S, LLC, in the field for identification of the defendant. The summons identified the address for the service as 1028 North Kings Highway, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. The return of service on the summons was filed on December 15, 2021, and reflected that the summons and petition were delivered to United States Corporation agents for Moving Pros LLC at 1028 North Kings Highway, Cape Garage Door. North, we call it Cape Garage Door, sorry. Cape Girardeau in November 9, on November 9, 2021. So that means that by at least December 8th of 2021, Moving Pros L with a Z had to file its answer in circuit court. No responsive pleading was filed. See Rule 5525 requires you to serve an answer to the petition within 30 days. So on April 13th, about three months later, Chick filed a motion for default judgment seeking 61517 in actual damages, plus $123,034 in punitive damages and reasonable attorney's fees totaling $1,500. On May 19, 2022, so about a month after that, the trial court conducted a hearing after which it granted the motion for default judgment and entered judgment against moving pros default judgment. The default judgment awarded Chick damages in the amount of $184,551 dollars plus attorney's fees of $1,500. That happened on May 19th, 2022. And then on May 31st, 2023, so more than a year later, Chick served post-judgment discovery in, ex of it, an, in aid of execution on moving pros at three addresses, the registered agent, the address on Metcalf in Overland Park, Kansas, and an address on North Merrimack in St. Louis, Missouri. That came as quite the surprise to moving pros with a Z, and on July 7th, 2023, they filed a motion to set aside the default judgment, pursuant to Rule 74.06b4. And the reason they did that is because Rule 7406b4 
says you can set aside a judgment if, it, if you didn't have personal jurisdiction or if the judgment was void. And interestingly enough, we come down here and we see moving pros didn't file a motion to set aside pursuant to 7405, which requires a showing of facts constituting a meritorious defense in good cause, and it didn't file it with reference to Rule 7406B1, 2, or 3, as such motions must all be made within a reasonable time, not more than one year after the default judgment. So our sneaky plaintiff's attorney here waited a full year to serve post-judgment discovery on the corporation. <laughs> and guess what? By then it was too late for the, plaintiff, for the defendant here to file a motion to set aside because it hadn't been served. So in its motion to set aside under 7406, it alleged that it did provide moving services and it was properly named in the petition, but it says moving pros with a Z is a Kansas limited liability company with a principal place of business in Olathe, Kansas, and moving pros registered agent in Missouri, where it's registered as a foreign limited liability company, is United States Corporation Agents Incorporated, located at 1028 North Kings Highway in Cape Girardeau. And then two, Moving Pros LLC, with an S, is a Missouri limited liability company with a principal place of business located in Wickenburg, Arizona. And Moving Pros, with an S, registered agent in Missouri, is also United States Corporation Agents. The petition named Moving Pros with a Z as the defendant, but the summons named Moving Pros S as a defendant. Service of the summons and petition was made on Moving Pros with an S registered agent and not on Moving Pros registered agent. But you see, that right there is where they went wrong. Why? Well, the reason they went wrong there is because Moving Pros with an S and Moving Pros with a Z both have the same registered agent. So what happened here, and, and you may not be familiar with this, so I should probably explain this. A lot of big companies don't want to have somebody sitting at a desk with a binder waiting for somebody to walk through the door and hand them a complaint or a petition or a lawsuit, whatever you want to call it. They don't want to have somebody do that because it's wasteful and inefficient. So they hire what are called corporation service companies. And basically, these are big offices with lots of staff, and they get hit with corporation, corporations that do business through them wind up getting petitions served there all the time. And what happens normally is they take a look at the complaint or the petition, they go to their database, they find the person named on the petition and in the summons, and if those two match, they send the complaint to them, usually by Federal Express. So now, once the petition comes in to the corporation agents, the 30 days starts right then. It'll be a five or 10 day delay getting out there to wherever the corporation is located and maybe a day or two further than that getting to the mail room. But then somewhere within that 30 days, the company is going to recognize it's been sued. They're going to hire a lawyer in the jurisdiction where they've been sued. And there you go. Now you've got a lawsuit. But in this case, moving pros with an S got the petition and the complaint and they said, hey, we never did business with this guy, and they threw it in their circular file. <laughs> They're not the defendant. Why would they worry about it? And instead, instead of looking at the petition and making sure the petition and the summons were consistent, because sometimes they're not, Be because the corporation agent didn't do that, it was sent to the wrong defendant, and the right defendant was never notified. But you see, nothing in the statutes of Missouri requires the right defendant to be notified by the agent that it hired. Basically, the only thing that requires the agent to notify the principal, in this case, is the contract that they have as the registered agent. And they are supposed to exercise due diligence and make sure that complaints and petitions get sent to the corporation in a timely manner. Even though the defendant didn't actually default because it didn't know that a case was on file, it was still properly served because the corporation agent, this United States corporation agents, they were properly served and they stood in the shoes of this moving pros with a Z. As a result, the court says, sorry, Charlie, that's the way it goes. 
you hired a bad agent, you didn't get notice, not our fault. You know, not our circus, not our monkeys, your problem, not ours. So in addition to that, they said, well, gosh, what about, what about due process? Surely we've got a claim under due process because we didn't get actual notice. And as a result, you know, surely we've got a problem with due process. And the court says, mm, no. And the court said, valid service of process on proving pros with a Z, duly authorized registered agent satisfies the due process right to notice. Because again, this is not the court's fault that it didn't get to the right defendant. It's the agent's fault. Now what's going to happen? Well, first of all, whoever runs moving pros with a Z, that corporation is going to seek indemnity from the United States Corporation agents. They're going to sue them and say, if it hadn't been for your mix-up in sending this to the wrong place, we would not have had this liability incurred and you're going to have to pony up and make us whole. That's what I would imagine will happen here. It is amazing in some respects that a corporation with a computer that checks one thing against another would not think to check the petition and the complaint and the summons against one another to make sure that they had the right corporate defendant. But for whatever reason, they didn't do that. And as a result... Moving Pros is on the hook for $184,000 in damages plus $1,500 in attorney's fees. The law of principal and agent in Missouri is very clear. The principal is responsible for the actions of its agent. So if its agent doesn't bother to notify it or screws this up, the agent is responsible. And now, because of the principal agency relationship, the agency is liable for that error. Now, that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to get a judgment because there might be all kinds of other things that come up in terms of defending the agent here, but the agent has a huge problem in this case, and it'll be interesting to find out exactly how it works out. That's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have the opportunity today, take a moment or two and do something kind for someone. Drop me a comment if you've enjoyed this, uh, this particular video. You can always email me at the address above. When you have time, do that extra nice thing for somebody, and then come on back and join me down here at the beach again tomorrow. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.